where do you go to find amazing seaside views and Irish antiques? To the fishing village of Kinsale in Ireland. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to Ireland, one of the most beautiful countries I've seen. Now, don't adjust your TV. It really is this green, and we haven't even started talking about the shamrocks and leprechauns. There is a surprise around every corner here. You see quaint little villages, beautiful castles like Blarney Castle right behind me. In fact, we're going to climb all the way to the top of Blarney Castle and kiss the Blarney Stone. Who knows? You may never shut me up after that. So if you're ready, let's discover Ireland. Ah, uh, Ireland. It's truly one of the most beautiful places in the world. From its dramatic cliffs and green rolling hills to its tiny villages and trendy big cities, there's plenty to see on the Emerald Isle. Once the land of feuding clans and oppressive foreign lords, today it's known for its independent spirit, which you'll see reflected in its wealth of history, culture, and traditions. And one of the defining characteristics of Irish society is their belief in superstitions. Ah yes, this is the land of leprechauns and fairies. And since I always believe you should embrace the local customs, I'm off to participate in one that's world famous, kissing the Blarney Stone. For that, we head to Blarney Castle, an ancient fortress located in Southern Ireland, just outside the seaside city of Cork. These imposing stone walls are said to hold the key to everlasting glibness. Okay, here's the plan. We're going all the way to the top, right to that open hole where there's a man sitting up there. You sit there, lean back, and kiss the stone. The origins of the Blarney Stone and the tradition of kissing it are unclear. Some believe it was a gift from a witch who was saved from drowning. Others believe it's the stone in which Scottish kings were crowned under. Regardless of its origins, tourists have been flocking to Blarney Castle to get a chance to kiss the stone for centuries. And why would anyone do something as silly as that? Well, to get the gift of gab, of course. How hard is it to kiss the stone? Well, there's a 10-story walk up, lots of stairs, and the stone is in quite an awkward position. But this is what you do when you come to Ireland. So, let's conquer those stairs. We'll talk about your fear of heights later. Do you know the reason that the stairs go clockwise and not counterclockwise? It's because, so the people who are attacking the castle have trouble with their swords, and the people who are defending have a full swing. Makes sense to me. And if you're worried about the climb, don't. You can stop along the way for a breather. You're definitely going to want to take a little side trip into some of these rooms. This was a young girl's bedroom. It was also a priest's room. And it's really great. If you look up, you can see how high the ceilings were. Over here, you can tell that's where they put the candles. But look at this. Graffiti. Let's see if we can find a year. 1916. I'm sure if you look, there's a lot of earlier ones. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, my handsome prince might be out there. All right, it's time to get back on those stairs. It's a lot of crowds climbing up. But don't worry, the lines move pretty fast. 120 steps, we're almost there. Even with the crowds, it only takes about 15, 20 minutes. Isn't that right? And once you reach the top, you can enjoy the view, which I have to say is breathtaking. Of course, pay attention to the line. You don't want to hold it up. Let's go kiss that stone. What's your name? John. OK, John, what do I do? Sit down on the next floor. OK. Ugh. OK. Hands on the rails right behind you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Keep your head right back down, please. Oh, no, wait a minute. There's one thing I forgot to do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. Okay. No hand sanitizer. No, no, that's all right. That's all right. That's already done. Oh. It's already clean. Yes. Hands on okay. the Okay. Yeah. Right Down to the smooth stone in the back. Oh, the smooth one. Yeah. Anyway. I left a nice lipstick print. <laughs> you want to hear a joke? I know some great jokes now. 
Don't worry, I'll spare you. But I will use my newfound gift as we explore some of the other sights at Blarney Castle. This is another little side room as you're climbing up that you'll want to see. This is the kitchen, and I guess I'm standing right in the fireplace because if you look up here, it looks like a huge chimney, okay? And then over here might have been another cooking area. Let's look under here because there looks like there might be a hole up there as well. You can just sort of see pots hanging down. It was something. This is something. But these buildings weren't just homes. They were also fortifications. Ooh, what's in here? The murder hole. Come on, you can squeeze. Oh, from here, they used to dump boiling oil on all the people down here, all the invaders. For those brave souls that made it past the oil, but not past the guards, there was a much worse fate waiting for them. Every castle has to have a dungeon. So let's go take a look at this one. It's really dark. I wouldn't want to be left here for who knows how long. Now, because we have a light, we can climb up into this tunnel here. In fact, if you bring a flashlight, you could do it too. It's not closed. Wow, you should see how far back it goes. It's amazing. Here's a tip, many castles and ruins have lots of stairs and uneven stones with little or no handicapped access. Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we'll be right back. After visiting the dungeon, you might be ready to hightail it out of Blarney, but you shouldn't leave without visiting the town first. And the world famous Blarney Woolen Mills is where you can find all those expensive Irish sweaters and capes at a deep discount. Perfect to accompany Ireland's cool climate. But wait, there's more. There's culture and history too. And it's just a few miles down the road in the city of Cork, Ireland's second largest city. Cork is mostly a walking city. You can get out and go exploring some of the little side streets, sit down, have a coffee, grab a bite to eat. Oh, what are you making? What are you making? Donuts. Oh, those are cute. How much? Okay, yeah, I'll take one. 99? Yep. Okay. Thanks. What we buy? Little local culture. Ooh, those look good and they're hot. Mmm. Yummy. Sugar fix. Cork is a culturally rich city from its famous opera house to great shopping at Emmett Square, or my favorite tradition, ringing the Shandon bells. Francis Mahoney wrote, with deep affection and recollection, I often think of those Shandon bells. Well, despite this being my first time at St. Anne's, I've heard of the Shandon bells, and I can't wait to ring them. But first, you have to climb all the way up to the bell tower. Yep, more stairs. Not a bad walk at all. Two minutes. This is the Belfry. These must be the bells. Oh, you are now in the Belfry and about to play the famous Bells of Shannon. Okay, select your favorite tune from the bench. Play the tune by pulling the number indicated. Alrighty. Let's just give it a shot. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. Oops. <laughs> anyway, let's pick a song. Let's pick a song. I don't think I'm very musical. Tell you what, I'll just give it one good ring. Thank you. There are a lot of traditions in Ireland, but no matter where I go, I always adhere to my favorite traveling custom, which is, of course, shopping. And the most picturesque place with the cutest boutiques is nearby, in the seaside village of Kinsale. Kinsale is a fishing village whose narrow streets all lead down to the harbor. 
It's exactly what you expect a little Irish town to look like, with a massive stone fort, little 18th century painted houses and storefronts, window boxes filled with flowers, and a harbor full of sailboats. This is a great little day trip from Cork. Okay, here's what you do. You come over here in the morning, you look at the fort, then you walk around, have a look in some of the shops, and then you have lunch. It's really a lot of fun, but you know what? Don't make the same mistake I did. Bring a little bit of cash, because a lot of the cute little cafes and restaurants you're gonna find, they don't take credit cards. Of course, there are plenty of things to do in Kinsale that don't require a credit card. So before you have your fun in the shops, why not learn a little history at Fort Charles, one of the largest military forts in Ireland. Since Kinsale is a big trading port, the harbor always needed protecting. So the fort has been associated with a lot of important events in Irish history, including the Williamite War, the Irish Civil War, and the Battle of Kinsale in 1601 when the Irish lost their fight with the Normans and installed William Penn as governor, as in the founder of Pennsylvania. One little bit of history you're going to hear about while you're here is the Lusitania. It was an Irish foggy morning in 1915 when the Lusitania was torpedoed by a German submarine right off the coast of Kinsale out here. If you're interested in taking a piece of the Lusitania home with you, then this is the place to come because Kinsale's antique shops are filled with memorabilia. And it's a great excuse to shop. If you can't find the piece you're looking for, don't worry, Kinsale has a lot of antique dealers. Is Kinsale a good place to come for antiques? It's very good, Laura, because we've got three or four shops in Kinsale, which is quite a high, high number for a little town. And don't worry about these beautiful pieces being out of your price range because they're not as expensive as you may think. Most antique dealers negotiate a price <laughs> within reason. I mean, most antique dealers uh, have a price below, obviously, which they cannot go. But um, I tend to, to price my items fairly carefully and selectively so that um, they're not too expensive. So I can't knock huge chunks off. But um, nevertheless, I think... But we can talk. We can talk, <laughs> yeah, sure. I love it when they talk my language. I'll take one of those and, of course, one of those. I'm going to have to curb my spending or else I'm going to need a boat to get home. Of course, if I do, I'm sure to find one at Kinsales Harbor. This has to be one of the most beautiful harbors in Europe. It is so picturesque here. Look at this. That's exactly what you wanted to see. Almost makes you want to throw a line out and catch your lunch. Speaking of lunch, once you've smelled some of the scents wafting from the restaurants, you'll forget all about the harbor and your fishing line, because Kinsale is also known for its food. Michael, why is Kinsale called the gourmet capital of Ireland? Part of the reason that people come to Kinsale, because everything is so fresh and so slightly different, you know. Um, another reason is because Kinsale actually was set up, there was a good food, a good food circle set up, uh, a number of years ago, which is basically an amalgamation of various restaurants in Kinsale. Um, at the moment now, there's 12 in, in the Good Food Circle. Okay, I'm game. And what is a Good Food Circle? Uh, they will find out what type of food you want and what you're interested in, and they will basically recommend the restaurant that will suit your taste. Lots of great restaurants in Kinsale. And this is definitely a beautiful day trip from Cork. Here's a tip, service stations can be few and far between off the main motorways with limited hours, so make sure to get petrol before you need it. Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we'll be right back. Okay, this has always been my fantasy, coming to Ireland and staying in a medieval castle, doing the sports like riding and shooting and playing golf, and then dressing up for dinner, sitting by the fireplace, oh, so very civilized. Well, I found a place where that fantasy has become a reality. Imagine a real 13th century castle, strategically located between a lake and a river, surrounded by hundreds of acres of private woodland that's also a five-star hotel. And you'll have discovered Ireland's premier vacation destination, Ashford Castle. Originally a monastery dating back to 1228 AD, its imposing facade is a reminder that here in Ireland, time appears to stand still. 
all your dreams of castles and kings instantly come alive at your first glimpse of its towering presence guarding the shoreline of Loch Carib. Thick stone walls, towers and turrets, it's exactly what you'd expect a castle to look like. Today, Ashford Castle is Ireland's number one luxury experience, a five-star castle hotel and a member of the leading hotels of the world. This is Ireland the way you've wanted it. The castle has been expanded throughout the centuries and new wings were cleverly built to match, but the original structure is still in use. Ashbury Castle dates back to 1228 and uh, obviously at that stage it was actually um, started out life as the outer tower which if you go out the main door you've literally got a wonderful tower and that started where Ashbury Castle began in 1228. There are very few five-star castle hotels in the world, and from the moment you arrive at Ashford, you know you've discovered something special. The interior of the castle is decorated in authentic antiques and original oil paintings. And you're not just checking in here, it's more like you're being welcomed as a weekend guest at a private estate, almost like when it was owned by the brewing dynasty, the Guinness family. It was actually belonged to the Guinnesses from the 1700s until the, 19, the early 1930s. And it became just their winter retreat, if you will. So this is where they came for their hunting, shooting, fishing. So it very much kind of was the Guinnesses who were responsible for developing the castle as we know it today. And in fact, this wonderful uh, building and the, the room that we're sitting in even now, you can see the, the height of the ceiling here, which is quite extraordinary. And that was very much down to the Guinnesses. Their love of fine craftsmanship and quality shows through in all the public rooms, and you'll definitely notice the details that also make it comfortable. The castle's bedrooms are all unique, not only in size, but also in the elegant decor. The variety of accommodations include a total of 83 bedrooms, staterooms, and suites, each individually designed and richly furnished, some with four-poster beds. All of our rooms are very individual. and They're individual in, in size, they're individual in location. There's only two rooms in Ashford that don't boast either a view of that magnificent lake out there or the river to the front. So by and large, all of the rooms command a water view. For a little extra space, one of the castle's suites are perfect for relaxing or taking the time to do a little business. But to appreciate the true castle in the country life, then getting involved in some of the castle's sporting activities is definitely in order. We are a total resort in, in the Irish sense of the word. So we offer things like we have a golf course, which is complimentary to our residents. Yes. Excellent. We also have out, outdoor sports, we have fishing, horseback riding, we do archery, we do clay pigeon shooting. We're the only castle or the only property in the country that boasts Ireland's first school of falconry. Well, I couldn't leave Ashford Castle without doing a little falconry, so no sooner said than done. After all, it's part of my castle fantasy, remember? And it's definitely an incredible experience and very easy to learn with a bit of coaching. It's also a great experience for kids who are absolutely thrilled to work with these magnificent birds. And from what Crispin tells me, the feeling is mutual. One, two, three. Good, good. Continuing with the lifestyle of the sporting crowd, I moved on to one of the original diversions here at the castle, sport shooting. Not for game like they did 100 years ago, but for clay targets. And again, with an expert at my side, I quickly brushed up on safety and technique and actually hit a few. Well done. I Good. Dusted them both. It's fun. With my aim tuned in, another sporting diversion caught my attention, archery. Once necessary to put food on the castle table, it's now just for fun. But again, with some expert coaching, I had a great afternoon. Bullseye. Is travel insurance really worth the money? Welcome back, and for more information on Ireland, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Ah, Ireland. It's a country filled with tradition, culture, and history. And whether you're Irish or not, you'll feel your Celtic blood rising with pride as you experience everything this incredible country has to offer. What a beautiful country. 
Everywhere you look, it's a picture. And the people, oh, they are the best. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From Ireland, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye. <laughs>